Hey guys, welcome back to Finn Scales and Fluffy Tales. My name is Bryn, and today I am coming at you guys with a rabbit care video. Back behind me, I have my bunny, Daisy. She is in her cage right now, but she'll probably come out to join us in a little bit. But today I am gonna be showing you how I take care of my rabbit, and you guys can do the same with your rabbit if you want to. Uh, but like always, I encourage everyone to do their own research before buying any type of pet. So let's get into the video. Before you get a rabbit, the first thing you definitely want to think about is space. So rabbits need more space than people think. Um, technically, one rabbit should have eight square feet of space in their enclosure plus another 24 square feet of exercise space. That is for one rabbit. So obviously for two rabbits, you would wanna double that, which that is a huge amount of space that rabbits need. Most of the cages that are sold in pet stores for rabbits like Petco or PetSmart are way too small. So I don't suggest using any of those types of cages. But that is one reason why I wanted a dwarf breed was because I live in an apartment and I don't have a huge amount of space. So if you live in an apartment and you want to get a house rabbit, that is something that you need to think about when you're choosing a breed or you're choosing a size of rabbit. Um, having a rabbit outside is possible. Now I know that there's going to be people out there who say, oh, rabbits should never live outside and blah, blah, blah. And that is not true. Rabbits can live outside as long as it's done properly. Um, again, if you're keeping a rabbit outside, it should have um, the enclosure that you keep it in should be a decent amount of space. Um, the only way you could keep a rabbit in a smaller cage is if you frequently let it out to roam around. Um, but any enclosure you have for your rabbit outside has to have protection from the elements and predators. After you think about how much space your rabbit is gonna need, you will need somewhere to keep your rabbit. And it doesn't matter if you keep your rabbit indoors or if you keep them outdoors. You need to think about their living space and where they're going to live. So if you have an indoor rabbit, you have a lot of different options. Um, you can do what I do and you can have your rabbit like have a home base type thing where your rabbit is in their home base like when you can't watch them or monitor them or when you're not home. So that is a good option, especially if you live in an apartment. Um, if a lot of people now also completely free roam their rabbit, so they do not even have a home base. Um, one rabbit YouTuber that comes to mind is Lennon the Bunny. I do not believe she cages Lennon ever and her rabbit just runs around her apartment all the time 24 7 and i think that is you know fine if you want to do that i personally don't trust daisy enough to do that she's already put some holes in my carpet so um anytime i'm not home she's in her enclosure um and then there's another thing that you could do there's another way that you could keep your rabbit so you could diy a cage a lot of people use those um, grids. They're like these metal square grids that they put together themselves and they build an enclosure out of that. So that is one way to do it. Or if you don't wanna do that, you wanna do something um, a little less DIY, but you don't wanna use like a dog crate. You could also go the way of using an X-Pen. So you could take an X-Pen or two X-Pens and make an enclosure. So that is another thing that you can do. You can build your rabbit a large enclosure and still let them out. Or those are also good if you can't let your rabbit out as much and you wanna give them a decent amount of space. So if you have an outdoor rabbit, um, there's gonna be a little bit more that you have to do with their enclosure, obviously because they're living outside 24 seven. So again, you must have at least eight square feet per rabbit, um, plus, you know, like a 24 square foot area of run. Um, the enclosure must have protection from the elements. So wind, sun, snow, rain, all of that, and also predators because there's 
a lot of things outdoors that want to eat your rabbit foxes weasels raccoons giant rats um, predatory birds so like if you do have a run you have to either make sure that they can't get to it when you're not watching them or that it has some kind of cover because a predatory bird will pluck your rabbit out of the pen if it can um, if you're not gonna allow your rabbit time out of its enclosure a lot you're definitely gonna you know bigger is better is what I always say now there's also a lot of debate about this online I personally don't think that wire floor cages are always bad just because um, having a wire floor cage is better than the rabbit sitting in its own poop and pee and not everybody wants to litter train their rabbit uh, I will say though that some breeds tolerate wire floor cages better for example Holland Lops Holland Lops they're super fluffy Daisy has a lot of hair on her feet and um, their hair on their feet protects them from the wire floor. Um, so like if you would compare her foot to like a Rex's foot, so like, like if you had a mini Rex or a regular sized Rex, her feet are definitely more well furred than a Rex. So she would be able to tolerate it better. However, if you were using a wire floor cage, you must give your rabbit somewhere they can go to get a break from standing on the wire whether that's like a piece of cardboard or some kind of mat or on top of their house or something but you should you should give them the option um to not be on wire all the time just because you know you don't want to cause sore hawks you don't want to make your rabbit uncomfortable but so if you must keep your rabbit on wire floor cages at least have some place where they can go to um, get a break from that now that you have thought about where your rabbit is gonna live inside your house, you're also gonna need to think about other ongoing costs such as food. Pellets, hay, and fresh vegetables is what your rabbit is going to eat. Um, as far as pellets, the type of pellet that you feed should have no soy and no grain because rabbits cannot digest that stuff. Um, even though soy and grains are technically plants, their digestive systems were not made to digest that. Um, in my opinion, the best type of food to feed your rabbit is this, the Sherwood Adult Complete Formula. This food is super good. It has no, no grains, no fillers, no soy. It's mostly just hay-based. Um, and this is pretty affordable, it's $18 a bag, and I can get it shipped to my door in two days. That is the thing about this food though, is that you can only buy it online. You cannot get this at Petco or PetSmart. Oxbow Garden Select is the brand that you can buy at Petco or PetSmart and is very similar to the Sherwood. And again, it doesn't have grain or soy or anything like that in it. Now, your rabbit's diet should mostly consist of hay. So like 80% of 80 to 90% of your rabbit's diet should be grass hay. And there's lots of different kinds of hay that you can feed. I do not suggest alfalfa ever, um, unless you have like a pregnant rabbit. But even then I would still be a little iffy about feeding alfalfa because it's super fattening. Even if you have a baby rabbit, I would just feed them regular Timothy hay or something like that. Um, Daisy gets bored of one kind of hay. When I first got her, I got a 10 pound box of second cutting Timothy hay and she got bored of that pretty quickly. After it was mostly gone, I ordered the Small Pet Select sample box, which comes in the 10 pound size and it includes second cutting Timothy hay, third cutting Timothy hay, oat hay, and orchard grass. And Daisy really enjoys the medley because she definitely gets bored of one type of hay. So if you were able to do that, you only have one rabbit, I would definitely suggest that. Um, it takes her six months to go through a 10 pound box of hay and she weighs between three and four pounds. So um, you can use that to a kind of estimate how much your rabbit is going to eat according to weight. If you have a larger rabbit, if you have a Flemish giant or a continental giant, it's going to eat more than my rabbit who weighs less than half the size of uh, the one of the giant breeds. Um, let's see. So as far as vegetables, 
Um, the one thing I want to say about that is if you have a young rabbit, do not introduce vegetables into their diet until they are six months old because their digestive system won't be able to handle it and you could cause them to get diarrhea if you start feeding them vegetables too soon. Once you do start feeding vegetables, you want to do it slowly and introduce them slowly so you don't, I don't know, rock their digestive system and then make them have diarrhea because that's also bad. Um, I have a link to safe vegetables to feed your rabbit because there's a lot of leafy greens that they could eat, but even some of the leafy greens are too high in oxalic acid and have to be rotated every so often. So you shouldn't feed those um, a lot. Mustard greens is one of those, but Daisy doesn't really like mustard greens. Honestly, that's not really one of her favorite vegetables. Daisy loves bok choy, romaine lettuce, green leaf lettuce, um, cilantro, turnip greens and she loves flat leaf parsley and curly parsley so those are her favorite vegetables she also loves carrots of course but carrots should only be fed as a treat um definitely only as a treat because they are full of sugar other treats you can feed your rabbit is oats so this is just a bag of thick cut old-fashioned oats and they are super cheap and rabbits love them and you can feed these as a treat. You can almost feed the feed as much as you want. And these are good, like especially if you have a baby rabbit who can't eat vegetables and you shouldn't give them too many treats because of their digestive system. Um, these thick cut oats work great because they will not hurt your baby bunny. Also, you could make your own treats. I have made treats for Daisy before um, out of her pellets and banana. So that was really fun. I did that for her birthday. Um, and other the link that i put in the description is to the house rabbit society website they also have safe fruits that your rabbit can eat on there i'm not going to spend the time in the video to list all the safe fruits and vegetables that your rabbit can eat when the house rabbit society has everything listed there but rabbits really love blueberries strawberries bananas um papaya mango all that kind of stuff and uh, those are pretty good for your rabbit, but don't give very many of those because again, they're really high in sugar and you don't wanna disrupt your rabbit's digestive system. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is litter training. Now, this is only if you have an indoor rabbit. If you have an outdoor rabbit and they're, they're on a wire floor cage, you don't have to worry about this. But if you have an indoor rabbit with a solid floor cage like I do, or if you have a free roam rabbit in your house, they must be litter trained. And there's many kinds of litter boxes you will use because you will need to have a litter box if you want to litter train your rabbit, which if they live inside, you'll have to. Um, the rabbit, the litter box that Daisy is using is this. It is the Wear Jumbo Scatterless Litter Box. What I like about it is it has this grate so that Daisy cannot dig in her litter box because rabbits will do that. Now, what I have on the bottom of her litter box is a potty pad, which I'm gonna get to that in a second. And I, and you know, a lot of people who watch this video are probably gonna be like, oh, that's a terrible litter box and blah, blah, blah. And I will say, if you have a rabbit that is five pounds or more, this litter box will probably be too small. This litter box only works if you have a dwarf breed, like a Holland Lop or a Netherland Dwarf, possibly a Mini Rex. I don't know a lot about that breed, so I don't know how big they are, but anything that's over five pounds probably will not be able to use this litter box because the rabbit will be too big. So for most people who have rabbits as pets, you are going to need to have a cat litter box. So this cat litter box must be pretty big. It must be deep because they need, your rabbit needs to be able to dig around in there and go to the bathroom without kicking their litter everywhere. And if you can get a covered litter box, that's gonna be the best. What a lot of people do, like if you watch Len and the Bunny, um, Lorelei actually uses these puppy pads in the bottom of her litter box and then she puts some hay in there and that's where Lennon does her business. So if you have a cat litter box, that's what I suggest that you do. If you also, but you could also put some, 
Daisy, you can't have that. Um, another thing that I would suggest to put in the litter box as far as actual like litter, if you want to use that, you can get four cubic feet of Aspen shavings from Petco or PetSmart for about $14, which is super cheap. But if you're going to use wood shavings, you want to use Aspen because other types of wood shavings could cause your rabbit to get a respiratory infection. Um, because of the chemicals from the wood like you definitely don't want to use pine or cedar aspen is the way to go um, Or you could also use another cheap option for actual litter to put in the litter box is Stove pellets that you can buy at tractor supply so Maybe they're called like horse stove pellets. I'm not really sure but you can get them from um, most farm stores they're really cheap and the wood based litter is what is going to control the smell so the potty pad isn't going to do anything for the smell but you can put a potty pad on the bottom and then put some wood shavings on top of that and then put the hay in there now daisy's cage is not exactly set up like that i used to have her hay bag right here hanging above her litter box and she always just moved her litter box away from it this the setup that she has right now in her cage is what she likes she prefers this every time i try to set up her cage a different way she pretty much moves everything to this spot so i keep everything here like this for now because that's what she likes so daisy must just be a weird rabbit but most of the time rabbits want their hay to be with their litter box because they like to poop and eat at the same time um let's see okay so for me, why I have put a potty pad in here. Now, normally I use just Aspen shavings, but recently I have found that Daisy has had some trouble cleaning herself, like her butt, for some reason. I don't think she can reach it very well, and I found I find myself like cleaning poop off of her butt because her butt is really fluffy, she has a lot of hair, and poop gets stuck back there. So she needs some help with cleaning herself. Which brings us to our next point, which is grooming. So if you get a rabbit, especially if it lives inside, you will need to groom your rabbit because rabbits shed. Pretty much all rabbits shed. Um, the, if you're worried about shedding, I think the um, breed of rabbit that sheds less than other rabbits would be the two Rex varieties. They don't shed as much hair as other rabbits, but Daisy, she is three to four pounds, and within a day, the carpet in my living room is covered in rabbit hair. And as you guys can see in this video, I have dark brown carpet. And Daisy is a solid orange rabbit, but um, in Holland Lops, that is a dilute color. So all of the hair, her undercoat is white, her stomach is white. So most of the hair I pull out of her is white and it gets all over the floor and on this brown carpet it's really easy to see so if you have a rabbit living in your house you're also going to want to get a good vacuum cleaner because trust me you're gonna be using it rabbits shed just as much as cats do so if you are okay with like having cat hair all over your house then rabbit hair probably won't bother you but I'm telling you, rabbits shed a lot. The, ha the hair floats through the air. It's gonna get in your mouth. It's gonna stick to your face. It's gonna stick all over your clothes. So you gotta be prepared for that. So how do you brush your rabbit? Well, the best brush, the best brush that I have found for my rabbit is this brush. It is called the Hair Buster. And as you can see, these little purple things right here, those are rubber. This helps these rubber things grip the hair as I'm combing her with this, and this actually pulls out the fur that wants to be shed. Now, other brushes do not do this. I've actually, I actually thought I lost this comb before, and so I had to buy another one. But before I bought a second one of this, because this comb's kind of expensive, it cost $20, I went to Pets, pet co and i bought a different comb for ten dollars it did not work at all this is the only comb that i have found to work on daisy's hair and yes it costs twenty dollars but it's really sturdy it's gonna last forever do not skimp on this comb if you have an indoor rabbit because this is the only one that i found to help um 
Also, if you have a baby rabbit, it will molt three times in one year. And what is molting? Molting is when your rabbit blows their coat. So they're gonna like completely shed their all their hair and they're gonna like re regrow new hair because it's like dogs. Dogs kind of molt as well, like certain ones do. They like shed seasonally. And rabbits do this as well, like like in the fall and spring usually. Now your baby rabbit is gonna do it three times in one year because the first time it's gonna be moving, transitioning from its baby fur to its adult fur. And then the other two times are gonna be seasonal molts. So Daisy is probably gonna have another seasonal molt here in like maybe a month or two. So I am not looking forward to that because she sheds all the time now. When your rabbit is molting, you will know because the shedding will get 10 times worse. And that is when you will need to take your comb and brush them and I will leave the link to this comb this specific comb in the description of this video so that you guys can go check it out um also as far as grooming you're gonna want to especially if you have a fluffy rabbit like mine you're gonna want to check their butt for mats and stuck poop every week to two weeks because if you don't you're gonna have something happen like I had last week and I had to spend like 20 minutes just cleaning poop off of her butt and combing her butt out because um, I didn't know. And the reason why you have to specifically check, so you have to put them up on the grooming table and lift their butt up and look, is because with all of Daisy's hair, she is so fluffy. She is so fluffy that whenever she is just hopping around or sitting or laying down, I couldn't see anything. So I had to specifically put her up on the grooming table and look because you cannot tell. If your rabbit has a fluffy butt, you can't tell just by looking at it, which is why you have to physically check. Um, another thing that you're going to have to do um, every month with your rabbit. Hey Daisy. Every, uh, yes. Another thing you're gonna have to do every month with your rabbit is, yep, you guessed it, clip their nails. Now for a rabbit's nails, you wanna get, now these are like cat nail clippers and these are just fine. You don't need a special pair of nail clippers. You just need a pair. I bought these for about $2 at Walmart and they work great. Now for nail clipping, your rabbit's not gonna like it. When Daisy was a baby, she used to just let me do it, but now she will not let me touch her front feet. Her back feet, she's a little more okay with because she can't see, so if you cover their eyes, sometimes they're better with it. But now, I have to wrap Daisy up in a little bunny burrito to get her front feet because she will not let me touch them. Every time I try to move her hair out of the way to cut her nail so I can see, so I don't cut the quick of her nail, she pulls her foot away. So I have to wrap her up in a burrito to be able to do it. So be prepared for that. Um, especially if you have to cut your rabbit's nails by yourself, which I do. I don't, I live alone, so I don't have any help doing it. I have to do it myself. But Daisy's pretty good with letting me do it. But, you know, she gets scared. She doesn't like it. But just because your rabbit doesn't like it doesn't mean it doesn't need done. Don't let them boss you around because they will. So, um, you, you need to do it even though they don't like it. So just try to be quick about it and um, just just do it even though they don't like it but it will definitely need done especially if they live in the house and they are not wearing down their nails naturally by digging outside or anything like that. I guess Daisy decided to go run around so you'll just have to look at me I guess. The next thing that you're going to want to, to think about when getting your rabbit is toys and toys are actually a big cost for rabbits because a lot of times you can't just buy their toys at Petco or PetSmart because I've looked at their toy selection and first off, they don't have a huge selection. And second off, most of the toys that they offer there aren't safe for rabbits. So the place that I suggest that you get toys for your rabbit is Etsy because there's a lot of people on there who already who own rabbits or are guinea pigs themselves and you'll be able to find a lot more toys which I just ordered some more toys for Daisy they should be here uh, probably sometime next week so eventually I'm gonna be doing a haul for you guys and telling you everything that I bought for her so that's what I'm that's probably the next video after this one that I'm gonna be doing is a toy haul from Etsy because I love getting her toys from Etsy but basically anytime you get your rabbit a toy um, you want to get them things that they can destroy, things that they can chew on. 
So I know I got these. These came in a box that I got for Daisy before. These are from Etsy. I think I got this from Amazon. I don't know if Daisy actually likes this. She's Daisy doesn't play with her toys a ton, but uh, she has chewed on this a little bit, as you can see. But you're definitely going to need to get them some wooden toys to chew on. Um, they love noise makers, so this one has some love too. I think I got this one on Amazon. But she loves this because it has a bell in it. Um, this plastic toy I got from Walmart. Now, this is really hard plastic. She, she doesn't chew on this a lot, but... She loves noisemakers. Um, I got this rattle from a uh, from an ad on Facebook, but this is actually made for babies. But as you can see, Daisy uh, chewed it a lot because you know rabbits love chewing. Um, but yeah, you definitely have to get them toys. And Daisy doesn't have a lot of destroying toys right now. Although she does have this. Now this was a piece of packaging I got from a from something I bought. And I just gave it to her to chew on because it's just cardboard so she can have this. And rabbits love to destroy things so you definitely want to get them some toys they can destroy. Um, another thing that rabbits like to do is forage for food. So Daisy actually has a few puzzle toys. Whoa, a lot of glare. Okay. So this is a cat puzzle toy that I bought from Petco. It was probably like 10 bucks. Daisy mastered this pretty quickly. So I ended up spending a little bit more money to get her this monstrosity. This is an intermediate toy, a puzzle toy that was made for dogs. But Daisy loves this. I bought this off of Amazon and she does pretty good. The only thing that she doesn't do, so this has like these bones are removable and there's a pocket here she knows how to open these and get the food out of this middle pocket where the bone is but there's also another pocket behind these she never she hardly ever gets food out of there so i don't think she knows how to use this toy completely but she loves this because she knows that when i sit this down it's it has oats in it and she's gonna spend time like foraging so i definitely would suggest getting some type of puzzle toy also for your rabbit. As far as toys go, another toy that you're going to possibly want to consider is these. These are stacking cups. Now I'm going to be honest, Daisy doesn't play with these that much, but you know, if you think your rabbit would enjoy them, they come apart completely. You can hide treats in them, which is really awesome. And they're really cheap. They only cost like $4 from Amazon for all of these cups. And most rabbits love them. Daisy's just kind of the exception to the rule. And the one toy I almost forgot to show you that is actually Daisy's favorite, but I don't really think of this as a toy. Ugh. But it's definitely a toy, is this. This is a giant collapsible cat tunnel that I bought for Daisy from Petco for Christmas. Was it Petco or PetSmart? I don't remember, but I got this this giant, crinkly, collapsible cat tunnel for Daisy from either Petco or PetSmart, I can't remember. But she loves this thing. It has a hole in the middle. So anyway, I'm gonna put it down now. Eh. Anyway, she loves that tunnel. She loves running through it. And what I like about it is it's collapsible. Um, and which means I can take it with me wherever I go. Like if she's coming with me, we're traveling somewhere, I can take that with me and she gets to have one of her favorite toys when we go somewhere. Also, you have to keep buying them new toys because they will get bored of their toys. And if you're, Daisy, don't hit the tripod. If your rabbit gets bored of its toys, then it will do other things you don't want it to do, like, chewing your cords in your house or ripping up your carpet now daisy i got lucky she doesn't chew cords she's never done anything like that so i don't have to worry about it i just but i'm gonna say i got lucky most rabbits chew cords and they will destroy your stuff so you have to make sure that you know you rabbit proof your home also before you get them which is why it's important to get them toys that they're allowed to chew on because you don't want them to chew on your stuff like your cords or your carpet. The most important thing you need to think about for your rabbit is gonna be vet costs. 
Now, in some parts of the world, so if you live in the United Kingdom or some places in Europe, maybe even Canada, I'm not really sure, but I know that this is for, I'm pretty sure that in Europe, it is required that you get your rabbit vaccinated. I think, at least in some parts, maybe like England. I'm not really sure, but I know that in some, in some part of the world, it is required that you have your rabbit be vaccinated. And for the United States, that is not true. You do not need to get your rabbit vaccinated if you live in the United States. So the only time you should need to take your rabbit to the vet if you live in the US is if it gets sick. Now, some people do choose to spay or neuter their rabbit that like if they have two rabbits and they're bonding them or spaying and neutering can sometimes help with litter training because what that does is it removes their hormones so it makes them want to mark their territory with poop less also sorry the tripod just moved daisy <laughs> ran into it so um you could also do that I have decided to leave my rabbit intact for now. That is just a personal choice that I made, but you know, I encourage everyone to do their own research on that. So if you want to get your rabbit spayed or neutered, you will have to save the money and pay for that surgery. Um, but the one illness that you definitely want to watch out for in rabbits is called GI stasis, which is gastrointestinal stasis. This happens when your rabbit's gut stops moving. The reason why rabbits need hay in their diet is because they need to constantly be eating. Their gut needs to constantly be moving and if your rabbit doesn't eat for a while, they can go into GI stasis or if there's a blockage and they can't digest their food, this could happen. And what they need to do when this happens is eat more, but sometimes they feel so sick that they don't want to eat. So you, if you suspect that your rabbit has GI stasis, then you will need to take it to the vet immediately because GI stasis can Sorry for the noise, Daisy's running through her tunnel. Um, so, what was I saying? Oh yeah, if you suspect your rabbit has GI stasis, you'll need to take it to the vet as soon as possible because uh, this, this illness can um, kill your rabbit in hours. It only takes hours for it to kill your rabbit. So what I suggest you have on hand in case of GI stasis is this. Whoa, a lot of glare. Let me move over here. Which I can leave a link to this in the description of the video. But this is basically emergency food that you force feed your rabbit if they're not eating and they have GI stasis. This is, that's what this is for. Um, but on the back, it says a scientifically formulated, complete and balanced meal designed specific for rabbits who have been stressed by surgery, illness, trauma, or poor nutrition. It provides digestive enzymes, mobility herbs, and supplementary nutrients needed to support normal metabolism until f proper fermentation cycles are reestablished. Plus is a weight gain formula. And Daisy's breeder recommends that all of her bunny owners that ha that take her bunnies have this on hand in case of GI stasis because you will have to force feed your rabbit if they're not eating. Um, another something that you can do to um, combat this um, to kind of as a preventative measure. So something that you can feed your rabbit as a preventative measure is this the Sherwood whoa Sherwood pet health and these are digestive tablets. You can give these daily um, because rabbits actually clean themselves like cats. But like I said, they shed a lot. Rabbits are unable to physically vomit. So they cannot cough up hairballs like cats do. So they groom themselves all the time. They cannot cough up hairballs. So they have to digest all of that hair even when they're molting, which is important which is why it's important to brush your rabbit. But this, these tablets help your rabbit digest that hair and anything else. This, these help to keep their gut moving. And Daisy's pretty small, so she only gets one of these tablets a day. Um, it's like $20 for 100 tablets. So, um, you know, if you have a larger rabbit, you might have to feed them more of these. But these last Daisy a long time and she gets one of these a day and sometimes she gets two a day like when she, if she's go 
if she's going through a mole and this gives me peace of mind that I'm doing everything I can to help her digestive system move along. All right, well, I have told you guys everything or at least mostly everything I know about how to take care of a rabbit and I hope that you guys find this video um, educational, interesting, um, I guess mostly educational though. I guess I wasn't really going for the interest factor or whatever, but hopefully this video was mostly educational for you. Um, maybe at some point I will make a video about where I got all of Daisy's stuff and I'll do like a cage tour or an enclosure tour kind of of what I have in her cage and where I got all of her stuff, which I might have already told you that somewhat in this video, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at finscalesfluffytails to see more. And um, also Pascal, my axolotl, has his own Instagram. His Instagram is Pascal the Axolotl. So I'll have, whoa, I'll have that link down in the description below. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you coming on here and giving me the time of day. And I'll catch you on the next one.